Hello. So I'm um, very excited. This is a topic that is dear to my heart. And first, I'm going to uh, talk a bit about the current resurgence in the queer movement. Sue is going to talk about more about what our role is as FSP and other radicals involved in the movement. And then I'm going to come back and share some proposals and ideas about what we can do uh, in FSP. So there has been an energizing resurgence of queer activism, part of the legacy of our fighting for basic civil liberties and act against violence and discrimination on the job, in public education, in the home, and in the streets. This resurgence is being led by queer youth, as most of the queer movements have since Stonewall. And instead of going towards the Democrats, there is a drive to be more radical. And when I say radical, I simply mean getting to the root of a problem. And uh, I think it's an exciting time to be a radical. Um, the legacy of Stonewall continues as more and more young people are standing up to be counted and to refuse to accept homophobia and sexism whether for a young woman to bring her girlfriend to the prom or to speak out against cuts to funding for essential so social services for homeless youth or for women. Um, I was born in the 80s, a decade after the Gay Liberation Front and dozens of other groups had paved the way for it to be legal, even to exist as a lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender person. I joined Radical Women when I was 16, just out of high school, and already a feisty anti-capitalist, feminist, and active in my gay-straight alliance. Now I'm 27, and I'm excited to see that there is a new generation that's even more comfortable with differences in sexualities and genders uh, than ever before. And there are more of us participating, joining groups or forming coalitions to try to work together against a rotten system. I joined the Freedom Socialist Party uh, shortly after the resurgence in activism uh, against neoliberalism and the globalization of capitalism, where several queers participated, um, as they've done in probably every other social justice movement. Today, the strategies of the queer movement are similar direct action tactics and mass mobilization for basic civil rights, including job protection and same gender marriage. What's needed more than ever is a radical leadership to channel the rage and energy of the queer movement into a winning revolutionary force to be reckoned with. The fight for the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, or ENDA, highlights some key struggles from within the movement and how radical leadership can win important gains. As radicals and progressive queers, we achieved a victory in forcing more assimilationist gay organizations to recognize the importance of transgender protection. Trans people are among the most oppressed sector of our society and not surprisingly have been the most militant fighters uh, since the very beginning of the modern gay rights movement. Community groups, leftists, feminists, trans and queer rights activists, along with the Freedom Socialist Party all over the country, staged direct actions and public shaming of sellout groups like the Human Rights Commission, or HRC, who uh, sold out trans people by accepting a version of ENDA um, without protection for gender discrimination, so just for sexuality. The current draft of the act includes coverage for trans people. But we need to continue to keep the fight up and need to pressure Congress to pass it already. Now, um, I've talked to, I feel, a lot of queer people who have a lot of doubt about getting anything out of Congress or Nancy Pelosi, and I understand that. We all do, I think, here. Uh, we've learned that the Democrats have been able to weasel out of many promises and have provided false hope to the queer movement for years. The Democratic Party is a liberal capitalist party that has proven time and time again to portray the working class for uh, bourgeois interests and I uh, wanted to say that the Democratic representative Barney Frank has even made some noise in the direction of changing ENDA back to leave out trans protections if the current version doesn't pass. And, you know, even if ENDA did pass, which would be a crazy historic thing because the Equal Rights Amendment never did, um, we will never have equal employment rights under capitalism 
for example, there's still the wage disparity between men and women and people of different races. So the bosses obviously want to keep us divided and conquered, and um, those political parties are funded by the bosses. So all of us working people have a common enemy, which is the capitalist system. Um, Obama, who is uh, not much of a friend to queers, just as much as he's not to public education, to that fight or to labor, uh, he has condemned don't ask, don't tell, uh, while talking out the other side of his mouth, saying it's, it basically needs to be upheld um, before, you know, so that we can, you know, do a survey of the Army. And recently the Pentagon spent $4 million on such a survey um, to see what the troops would think about repealing don't ask, don't tell. We already know that they would support re the repeal of it. The explosion of activism after the pass of Proposition 8, which um, defined marriage as between a man and a woman, uh, after it was passed in California, has, had, uh, has spread all over the country and reverberated around the world. Um, it's, it really has kicked off this new wave of queer activism. On Valentine's Day, a group called Queer Rising had a protest and chained themselves to the Manhattan Marriage License Bureau. And um, they were, their charges were dropped after they packed the courtroom and had support. So I think that there are more examples. In countries like Spain, Canada, Mexico City, all these places already have same-sex marriage in place. And um, exciting that in Costa Rica, the PRT, Partido Revolucionario de los Trabajadores, um, is uh, basically supporting same gender, same sex marriage, um, and connecting the issue to workers' rights and encouraging you know, them, along with labor unions, to fight for same sex civil unions. Um, and then, you know, many more examples, like in Russia. They're fighting against the government and fascist goons to just be able to have pride celebrations. The LGBTQ movement often is the most multi-issue, making demands like queers for open borders and reproductive justice now. There are several gay groups calling for immigrant rights, opposing the ICE raids that tear apart families or legislation like SB 1070. As queers, often we feel the effects of national scapegoating or even scapegoating from within our own families, so it's in our own interest to stand up to discrimination in all its forms, besides the fact that there are many queer immigrants and probably half of them are women. In San Francisco, there's a coalition of different groups that have taken a stand against the hotel bosses by helping wage a boycott don't get caught in a bad hotel as sung to the tune of Lady Gaga's Bad Romance is a excellent viral video. You should check it out on YouTube. It's one of the many creative ways that we could participate in protest. Queer radicals also take the lead in standing up to the anti-abortionists who come to San Francisco every year. The Catholic Church mobilizes thousands to march in a walk for life in the darkest city of gay old San Francisco. And basically, I mean, their leadership is made up of the same people as the Minutemen and the Nazis and um, religious rights. So uh, every time they come to town, the Bay Area Coalition for Our Reproductive Rights, which we are very active in, I myself have been active in for a while, uh, has been able to mobilize a counter presence to show alternatives to their women hating and homophobia. We've had the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, pro-choice families, the Raging Grannies, and many left feminists, socialists, labor groups participate over the years. And in 2010, uh, uh, Radical Women, FSP, along with all these different people, helped organize a counter-protest to the right wing. And one of the highlights of the day for me was the queer kiss-in to show that our love is not wrong and hopefully to uh, keep the antis from wanting to come back. Um, the anti-abortionists are the same people who oppose queer marriage and LGBTIQ equality. Women, along with transgenders, are fighting for autonomy over their own bodies 
Um, so that's another way to make the connection. And along with labor, the immigrant rights movements, if we all work together, we would be unstoppable. Like every movement that we're involved in, the uh, queer movement is suffering from a lack of direction. And uh, I will repeat what Anita said. It boils down to a question of leadership, a big theme in our political resolution that we've been discussing this weekend. And examples of how um, this lack of leadership is showing itself in uh, November 2008 elections, when California voters passed Proposition 8, repealing same-sex marriage, there were huge protests. But a few months later, when the California uh, State Supreme Court upheld that law and protests were called again, the turnouts were a lot smaller. Uh, for example, in Seattle, the first protest in November pulled 10,000 people uh, a couple months later, the second rally, only 500 attended. And then we got to October 2009, the National March on Washington, D.C., pulled 150,000 participants. But nine months later, there's only a haphazard network of groups uh, to show for it. And so why this yo-yo effect? Um, and what's needed to harness this tremendous anger and impatience into a sustained militant movement that can win some victories. The first and most fundamental problem is that the movement lacks a radical program as well as leadership. And I'm not talking here about the thousands of young people who d turn out for the demonstrations, but about those who are organizing the demonstrations. And we're not trying to deal today with the most conservative wing of the gay leadership the Barney Franks, the Democratic Party hacks, and the Human Rights Campaign, uh, which is the Democratic Party official gay mouthpiece and fundraising arm. These organizations, frankly, have been completely discredited by the ranks, in the ranks. Today we want to examine the new organizations that have sprung up who are calling protests and denouncing the go-slow strategy of the Human Rights Campaign. And there's three main national networks that have emerged uh, along these lines. There's Join the Impact, Equality Across America, and uh, the newest group is called Get Equal. Join the Impact was the first group that uh, emerged. They called the demonstrations against Proposition 8 that, uh, when it passed in November 2008. Like I said, there were huge militant crowds that turned out. And what struck me in, Seattle, in the Seattle protests was the really broad spectrum of ages, um, but the majority were young, and a good third of that crowd was straight. And although the issue was marriage, um, the, what people were really focused on was not so much uh, marriage, but overall equality. They had all just finished voting for Obama and were full of hope. Um, but they didn't read the fine print. Obama had actually said he did not support gay marriage during his campaign. Join the Impact was started by two people with high-tech backgrounds in the corporate world. Uh, through Facebook and emails, the word spread like wildfire. When the rallies were called, all these militant people showed up, but all the speakers were Democratic Party politicians. In San Francisco, follow-up community meetings were called, and, uh, and then they were abruptly canceled. So that energy never coalesced, and now Join the Impact has faded from the scene. The middle caste, the layer in between the ranks, and the uh, cap, I'm sorry, blub. <laughs> the middle caste, which is that layer in between that we were talking about earlier in the convention, was terrified of a movement they couldn't control. Next came the National March on Washington. This was organized by Equality Across America, which was a temporary alliance of odd bedfellows that split apart after the march was over. It was called by David Mixner, who is a former Clinton cabinet member. And uh, other key organizers were Cleve Jones, who worked with uh, Harvey Milk and did the AIDS quilt, Progressive Democrats, a bunch of techies, and uh, the International Socialist Organization all jumped in there after it got started. The platform is full LGBT equality in all 50 states, period. 
Um, the money for this march came from David Mixner and Lady Gaga. But after the march, this alliance splintered, and the two paid organizers left the group to form a new gay internet action group called Get Equal, where they're getting paid $75,000 a year by a gay man who owns Progressive Insurance Company. So you begin to get the idea, when I was referring earlier in a discussion to follow the money, this is what I'm talking about. Um, but the young people who came to the March on Washington didn't know all this, what was going on behind the scenes. They also often don't know in some ways that the organizing for this march was a step backward from previous gay marches on Washington in political program and in democratic structure. And that's part of why the history's got to be passed on. Uh, the Freedom Socialist Party was very involved in organizing the first three national marches on Washington. The first one in 1979 was led by queer radicals of color, and our comrades uh, were, um, were key among the leaders in it, uh, including Yolanda and Doug, who are here today. Uh, they had democratically run organizing committees in each region which elected delegates to a national steering committee. These delegates adopted a set of demands which included, in addition to gay and lesbian freedom, calls for an end to racism, for reproductive freedom, and solidarity with labor. The marches were paid for by local fundraising efforts, and there was no corporate or foundation funding. Similar processes took place uh, for the marches that followed in 1987 and 1993. Again, FSP, uh, Freedom Socialist Party and Radical Women were very involved, and um, Comrade Merle Wu was a speaker at the 87 march, and Chris, who's here, was very involved as well. Uh, FSP has continued ever since to try to bring radical and multi-issue voice to the queer movement and to warn our community not to rely on the Democrats and to mobilize against all kind of bigots and Nazis. Even in the last few years, as the annual Pride March has turned into corporate parades, we managed to organize very successful contingents with themes such as We Take No Pride in War, Unite for Queer and Immigrant Rights, and The Fruits of Labor. Um, <laughs> Anita and I both feel that part of our job is not to just bring our socialist ideas to the queer movement, but also to educate the new queer activists about the radical history of the gay movement itself. And um, this is where, if you haven't, um, these are some things to read. The socialist feminism in the first decade talks about a lot of our activism during the 70s and covers those first marches. Gay resistance, the hidden history. Uh, I wrote this little thing on the front lines of lavender labor history, the FSP in our action. And this was published last year, Smash the Church, Smash the State. Merle Wu did the final essay in this anthology, which is really fabulous. And we had a great study group on it. Um, and in that light, I wanted to really thank our gay elders, Merle Wu and Tamara Turner, who couldn't make it to the convention um, for making the FSP really proud in the gay movement. Uh, back to today and what the leadership of the left is and should be providing. The queer movement is an arena where we're trying to work with other left groups and at the same time debating with them. At this point, our main left collaborator and main ideological opponent is the International Socialist Organization, or ISO. Our differences are over feminism, whether autonomous movements of the oppressed will help or hurt the broader working class movement and the nature of the vanguard party. And feminism is really key to our impact on the movement. Um, it's the essence of what drives young people of all sexualities to participate in the queer movement. And it's what distinguishes us from the rest of the left. Everybody may not use the word feminism, they may call it gender justice, but it's still the ideological essence of why people are getting involved. And you can see it everywhere. Um, the Gay Straight Alliances, in Jordana's article in the Freedom Socialist, there's over, she says there's over 4,000 across the country. There's a lot of young lesbians and gays 
and a gazillion of their straight girlfriends that are involved in these GSAs, um, and a few brave straight guys, too. Um, but um, it's, it's because, aside from radical women, there isn't much of a feminist movement out there to get involved in, so that's where people go to fight sexism uh, today. Um, now, the ISO uh, it doesn't seem to realize that that's a big part of why these young people are drawn to this movement. Um, they characterize the feminist movement as bourgeois, and I believe they think the same thing about the gay movement, but they don't say it outright. In the ISO's uh, main gay figurehead, Sherry Wolf, says in her book, new book, um, she slams identity politics and separatism and in, implies that that's, that is what autonomous uh, gay organizing is. Um, i got to skip some of this. Let's see. Um, now, I think the ISO is opportunist in general in their work, but this analysis they have of the gay movement, I think, helps explain how they operate in the queer movement. Uh, they've gotten heavily involved in the last year and a half because of a large number of young people. They saw their... Um, they saw a lot of numbers. And so after, frankly, decades of ignoring the gay movement, they got very involved. Um, they look for young radical queers to recruit to their organization, but they do not try to move the queer organizations to the left. They pull young radical aside and um, talk to them about revolution and then won't even support a multi-issue platform inside the gay coalitions. In contrast, FSP recruits the best gay leaders to help build not only the vanguard party, but to build a revolutionary wing within the queer movement. Um, and we've seen this way that ISO operates in a lot of our branches in Portland, San Francisco, and our comrades in the Chicago Gay Liberation Network have had the same experience. In the last year and a half in Seattle, we've been in a coalition uh, with the ISO, a couple different coalitions with the ISO. Uh, Ann Slater, C. Fisher, Tamara Turner, and myself at various points have been in um, working with them in those coalitions and debating with them and talking to the ISO members. And you know it is getting some results. Um, the ISO had refused to support Radical Women's Sisters Organized for Survival campaign. But the ISO members we were working with in um, the Gay Coalition Seattle Out protest voted yes, that that coalition should endorse Radical Women's campaign. There's also the lone gay ISO member that we know of um, recently wrote Tamar that after working with us for a year and a half in the movement, he, has really, he said, I have really come to respect you and your comrades in the FSP. Okay. Um, so I think it's important to remember it's a balance. We debate the left, but we also really got to try to work with them in the movement. Um, and I'm going to skip that. I'm running out of time. Um, I wanted to say one thing about our work is, um, you know, a lot of the left groups, when I run into them in these coalitions, they send all their straight members because they don't have any gay members, um, basically. And um, they also don't have any gay literature or gay his uh, history in the gay movement. Um, and then I took a look at our party. We got this stack of books. I went over the membership list, and although you guys are hard to define, um, <laughs> over a third of our membership is queer. Now, some people think it's over 75%, some of the people we work with. <laughs> And, th and that is because our straight comrades are such fierce defenders of gay rights. And, and uh, Anita and I want to let you know that we, we know we, the straight members have our back um, and they have the passion and involvement that we do. Um, I especially, on this point, want to thank Gary. <laughs> and I'm going to out her, she's straight. <laughs> um, is uh, for really, um, for her advice and leadership 
to the gay fraction all these years, but also being, she's the international secretary now, and she's been very attuned to the fact um, she's seen that uh, it's through working with women and queers in the left in other countries that a lot of international recruitment poten potential so for us. Here exists. are some of our proposals, concrete recommendations. Um, go to a coalition meeting in your town and see what they're doing, Queer Rights Coalition. Who are the major players in the group? Um, I think that coalition meetings are a great way to meet people and could be an effective way to have an impact, even if just one of your branch members can go. If there's no such type of coalition meeting, then consider starting one in your own town. Consider if this is the right time to, to initiate a new grouping or not. Invite other groups to speak at meetings or events. Um, in Radical Women, we re recently had a very successful panel on queer radical strategies for our movement, and we invited a member a, of um, Equality New Mexico and Havoc, which is a the queer youth um, wing of Pride at Work. And I think we need to grapple with how do we build a bridge between the people that we know socially and the people we know politically. How do we bring our political selves to the social scene? And for me, I. I'm you know, I struggle with this as a party DJ. Um, you know, I get a lot of recognition for organizing community benefits or playing music at, at queer dance parties, but it's harder for me to get recognition as an activist going out and organizing protests and writing and stuff like that. So um, I think that it's important to ask someone from the party scene to speak at an event. That's what we did. You know, a lot of the people who come to my dance parties are activists. So... Um, Ask someone out for coffee or tea and engage in political discussion with them, not just gossip. And uh, always make sure to bring event flyers to parties and cultural events. Um, make sure to utilize every outreach opportunity from softball games to drag shows. Radicals need to go where the people are. For example, in some towns in the U.S., um, the working class, the place to find the working class people is at the bar. That's where they hang out, and that's where you need to go to talk to folks. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there, and if there's someone uh, you know, who just isn't interested in politics, don't get cynical about the entire community. Don't believe the hype about the gays. Um, you know, not all, all of us are bourgeois assimilationist types like the HRC, Human Rights Commission. And contrary to popular belief, most queers have pretty low incomes and don't own gorgeous homes like on the L word. So, um, you know, I always bring flyers with me to every club that I go to. Um, talk to people and ask them what they think about events in gay newspapers that they read. And, you know, recognize that some people might never come to a meeting, but if the Nazis come to town, they would probably come to a rally so we need to build a base of support with many different kinds of levels. Um, and I think that we need to orient to queer people of color and queer workers, especially the youth, and wanted to second what Jed had raised yesterday during discussion about the myth of the post-racist society, that uh, for queer people of color, their lives are already multi-issue, so it's a good chance that their politics would be too. And overall, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and queer members of our organization and FSB should consider getting involved in the movement if you are not already. Do it. We have a unique history and position as socialist feminists, as Sue explained. We are unflinchingly fighting for the leadership of the most oppressed. That includes the whole LGBTIQ spectrum. And along with our straight comrades, we need to help build bridges between different struggles, make democratic demands, and always, always emphasize the need for socialist society where all kinds of gender expressions and sexualities would be able to proliferate. Let's do it with all the glitter, fabulousness, and optimism we have as queer rebels. Thank you.